What is up everybody? This is your guy Cly and welcome back to Budget Buys. And today I'm going to be talking about the new LED gaming keyboard from Five Below. This is part of their Unlocked Level brand and as such it comes in at a whopping $5.55. Now, some of you might be surprised that I'm talking about a gaming product from Five Below, but it doesn't have Booga's name plastered on it. And the reason for that is simple. It looks like the Booga collaboration has officially come to an end. But that's not necessarily a bad thing, especially in regard to gaming gear. But I'll go more in depth with that later on in the video. For now, let's just focus on this. Also, before I go any further, I do want to point out that the new LED gaming keyboard is very similar to the multicolor LED gaming keyboard that I reviewed prior to the original Booga review. And I might as well compare the two in this video. And here we have both of the keyboards out of the box. And continuing on with our comparison of differences, we have what has to be the most obvious. And those are the gaming keys present on the previous model. Over here on the WAS and D keys, as well as numbers one through four, they're bright red. Now, there is no difference in texture, which would have been nice if you're gonna make these proper gaming keys, but the visual cue guiding you to the most commonly used keys for gaming is still a nice touch that is missing on the unlocked level edition. Next, we have the font because while the unlocked level uses what can pretty much be considered a relatively harmless traditional font, things are kind of blocky and a little tryhardy in the case of the arrow keys for the previous model. They really wanted to drive home the fact that this is a gaming keyboard. Speaking of different types of keys, I might as well point out that while on the unlocked level edition, it uses an ISO style enter key, on the previous model, we have the ANSI style enter key, which is more common here in the United States. However, a lot of budget keyboards tend to stick with the ISO version of the enter key because that way they can produce the same model of keyboard and ship it out to different regions, and most people don't really mind. Personally though, I do much prefer the ANSI style. Also, by using the ISO style, it does move the backslash key from above the enter key to right here beside it. Just thought I'd point that out. Next up, we have the cables. Over on the previous model, there is a 53.1 inch PVC cable. And on the unlocked level edition, we have a 59.04 inch PVC wrapped USB cable. Though, that extra six inches does come at the expense of the width of the cable. The previous model is definitely thicker and stiffer, for better or worse. Now over here on the back, we actually have a couple of similarities in addition to the differences. And I'm not just talking about the fact that the Unlocked Level Edition has a much nicer badge back here. First off is the fact that while both keyboards have fake rubber feet, texture and all, kind of weird, the previous model put a little dot of rubber in the middle to give you some skid protection, but while the void exists on the newer model, they didn't really do that. However, apparently the pennies they saved on small dots of rubber were used to make actual adjustable feet, and I'm not gonna lie, I actually prefer having the adjustable feet to the rubber feet, especially since nine times out of ten, I'm going to have the feet extended anyway. Also, I kind of find it funny that there's a fake battery compartment back here. I wonder if whichever keyboard they took the shell mold from is actually meant to have a battery compartment. And back to the front. Now, one last difference I want to talk about is the fact that the unlocked level edition actually has a proper set of function media keys up here on the F row, while the older version does not. In fact, where the unlocked level edition has a function modifier key, over here, it's just another Windows key. I've tested this on multiple systems, and yes, hitting this key, which is denoted by a square on both keyboards, I guess they didn't want to use the Windows logo, just pops up the start menu. And it also does that on Linux. 
I don't have a Mac, so I couldn't test it there. Now, as for what those function keys are, if you hold down function and hit F1, that's going to bring up your home page. F2 launches your email service. F3 is search. F4 launches your media player. F5 is play pause. F6 is previous track. F7 is next track. F8 reduces your system volume. F9 increases your system volume. F10 mutes your system audio, F11 launches my computer, and F12 launches your calculator. Now, as for the LEDs, both of these keyboards use the same really clever, but at the same time, really dumb method for activating the LEDs. If you press the scroll lock key, it's going to turn on the LEDs. It's tied into the scroll lock indicator circuit, and I just thought that was kind of weird. The same thing happens on the newer keyboard, but my laptop is not getting along with both keyboards plugged in at the same time, so I just have this set on a separate power supply. While the LEDs do work on this keyboard while it's plugged into just straight power, the same can't be said for this one. So internally, they're not exactly identical, but they do share this one weird feature. And I think it's extra weird that this one does it because it actually has a function layer. They could have definitely assigned the control to that instead. Also, while the LEDs use the same method and it looks to be the same number of actual LEDs, the color pattern is inverted between the two keyboards. I just thought that was kind of neat. Now, one big limitation in tying the LEDs to the scroll lock key is the fact that it is operating system dependent. Only Windows really does anything with that key to light up an indicator. So if you're on Mac, Linux, probably Chrome OS, your LEDs aren't actually going to work. They're going to flash for a second when you plug in this keyboard, not this one, turn off, and then stay off no matter how many times you hit the scroll lock key. There's actually another reason why I wish they had put the controls on this keyboard on the function layer. Now, as you probably heard during the sound test, this keyboard is kind of squishy and doesn't feel the best to use. And while some of that does come down to the fact that this is a membrane keyboard, just like the previous edition, it also has to do with the budget construction. This thing is made of some of the lightest, flimsiest plastic you can imagine, and it kind of shows. Also, the domes in this keyboard are a bit smaller than those in the previous model. I don't know if you can see it in this up close shot, but there is a pretty significant difference. And while that doesn't change the feel all that much, it might affect durability. Also, another place they cheaped out on both of these keyboards is the fact that there's no badge here with their branding. Despite the fact that they actually went out of their way to get a really nice custom badge on the back here whereas the other one just had the white data plate. I guess that custom badge took up the plain black sticker budget as well. Oh, and while I have you up close and personal, I did plug this directly into my computer this time, and as you can see, scroll lock does indeed control the LEDs, and I still think that's weird. And there you have the unlocked level LED gaming keyboard from Five Below. And in my opinion, it is actually kind of worth the $5.55. Because it's a keyboard. It works. And if you are in a situation where your main keyboard breaks and you only have a few dollars until your next paycheck, this will get you through. Though it is admittedly not ideal. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned how I thought the Booga collaboration ending is actually not that bad. And that mainly comes down to price. 
Because while yes, the collaboration did bring us one of the best keyboards Five Below has had to date, at the same time, that probably could have been cheaper if they didn't have to pay the royalties to use his name. And yes, to rain on the parade of at least a few people from the first Booger Review video, he did not pay out of pocket for that product line. He was paid as a spokesperson. And now because that's over, we ended up with a gaming keyboard for $5.55. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see something even better in the not too distant future. Because even if Five Below wants to keep Unlocked Level as their $5.55 budget brand, they do still have their Titan gaming series that they can use for more expensive products. Like this controller that I picked up for $10 ages ago and never got around to reviewing. They still carry them at my local store, so I should probably get around to that at some point. All right, I think I've dragged this review of a budget gaming keyboard on long enough and actually ended up having to cut a mini review that I had in here for the matching RGB wrist rest, which I might make a dedicated video for. Let me know down in the comments if you want to see that. But until next time, this is your guy, Cly, signing off.